Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Yes, it's Friday night. Just got paid. Friday night, money in my pocket, uh, feeling bright. Okay, yes, we had to get into that. But as you see, the story that we're going to be digesting and trying to make sense of it, of course, uh, and giving a little humor into it as well. Now, we know Kenya Moore oh, hair care. Right. Do not, and I say it again, do not be played with. She's not the one to be played with. So, when she's giving her time and attention to you, you need to pay attention. Because the same way she's giving you attention, you can mess up, uh, get on her bad side, and she will pay you no attention. All right? <laughs> But we just got to go on and talk about this here, this here, okay, about Kenya Moore pretty much taking up for Drew Sador, okay? Now, we know in one of those house scenes, I don't know if it was episode two or three, but Drew tried to call herself mending fences with the Kenya Moore hair care, honey, okay, the boss in charge, and, uh, you know, it was very petty with what they were going through. That's how Kenya saw it. And she said, sure, I'll establish you, give you an olive branch. We'll start over brand new and we'll see what we can do with one another. So basically, she came to Drew's defense when Ralph was gaslighting her. I call it making a fool out of her. Uh, we don't need all these technical terms or these new lingo words they put out there to just say something plain and simple but hey is Ralph cheating is he cheating with a heteros well is he cheating with a man or woman doesn't really matter it's still cheating I think you would get your heart broken if it was a woman he was cheating with and if it was a man you'd be like well damn did I see the signs you know, so either way, you would be messed up in the head. But I think you'll be mostly messed up in the head if it was a woman. Because that's just how we're made as women. But, um, honey, that's why I was saying y'all have be having these open marriages and these men be wanting you to bring in another woman. Hey, if you're really the boss and in charge of that uh, situation, you would say, well, we need to bring in another man. Okay? You need to see me making sex, making love, however you want to see it, with a man while you're trying to get your groove on with this other woman. So why is it right for a man to want two women in the bed with him, but it's wrong for a woman to want two men in the bed with her? Now, that would be really doing it the correct way and the fair way. But, you know, we're going to leave that alone for right now. But let's get to Kenya Moore. When she was basically trying to help Drew and tell ralph of his shortcomings that no you're doing the same thing my ex-husband or soon to be ex-husband has done to me and if i was in that place uh in that place headspace now that i was in several years ago child if you did that to me now, nah, i throw this table over. But she was referencing if she was still fooling with Mark. Mark ever did that to her, she would throw the table over. And I'm like, huh, wait a minute, baby girl, wait a minute. Because it seems like Mark Daly had a trance over you. Even Candy was questioning it. Everybody on Real Housewives of Atlanta when the season, when Mark was uh, on it, everybody was like, what the hell wrong with Kenya? Kenya ain't coming with the smoke. She ain't throwing out no fire. No, none of that. It's just like, he's saying whatever he want to say to her, and we just supposed to let her sit and take it. Yes, honey, Candy and the rest of the crew that was filmed on that particular um, season with Mark Daly, child. Could nobody help Kenya. 
Couldn't nobody help Kenya because she was still in love with the man. And she was trying, in her words, saying she was being submissive. But everybody just wanted to shake Kenya like a rag doll. And say, girl, come back, come back. You lost in space. You lost in space. Stop the spot. You know, you know what I'm saying? Call Star Trek. Call uh, anybody. She's in the sunken place. You know, come get her. We love her. Bring her back. Bring her back. Resuscitate her. And all that kind of stuff. So she was having little spats because Drew had got word of through Sheree's friend that uh, Drew and Sheree's assistant was both, you know, talking amongst each other and uh, messed around and told uh, Drew that, well, I don't know how it really got started. But anyway, the, the subject was brought out that Ralph was gay. Okay, and this is what the assistant was supposed to have blurted out. But it seems like um, Drew Sedora didn't hear that or she didn't want to hear it. And she wasn't able to get her thoughts together how she wanted to approach it. So she pretty much just tried to get on Sheree's friend. Like, you just shut up. You just shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Like, Drew, if that girl came over there and slapped you upside your head and drug you around that table... Uh, what would you do, baby girl? What would you do? Because I really don't think you about them hands. You kind of like candy birds. Y'all be saying y'all about them hands, but don't want to get up there and do the real thing. Okay? Do, do work. You see what I'm saying? Don't talk about it. Be about it. And um, I don't know. It's just kind of weird, crazy. And we just let it sit there at the table. And somehow, when Candy was taking her girls on up there to New York, they brought it back up again. When they, when they was at the table sitting down. And Kenya was like trying to get her point. It's like, no, nah, Ralph, don't say that shit. Don't don't do that. Don't don't make light of how she feels. Don't tell her how she's supposed to feel and how she's supposed to get over it. No, nah, she ain't ready to move on because evidently you still doing the same shit, making her feel the same way. So there's a problem there. So Ralph was like, you know, he ain't kind of like Kenya getting on his ass. I'm like, see, that's the kind of woman Ralph needs. And if Drew can't be it, she need to step aside. She need to step aside and let somebody else claim his behind. Because nine times out of ten, he either is creeping with a woman or a man or hell both. Okay? Because mm -mm, Drew ain't getting his best anymore. He done got tired. He done experienced some other things. And that's pretty much how it is going down. So, they were like, no, honey, no. <laughs> You're not going to do my girl like that. You fin to acknowledge how she feels, when she feels it, and don't tell her to move on until she's ready to move on. And, you know, I, I thought, okay, Kenny, okay, girl, you're trying to be Sable Ho, trying to be Captain Sable Ho around now. I understand you didn't want to be, um, how we call it, you didn't want to be the villain this uh, time this season. So, okay, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. But sometimes you got to let people fight because it's, it's interesting how they get down, how they uh, handle certain things that have been dropped at their front door. We can't say everybody. Let's, let them feelings come out. It's a part of healing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was like, can you hush? Let them fight. Let them fight. Let them fuss. Let them fuss. And then see if the dudes are going to jump in there any time to save uh, Mr. Man. Ralph is what they call him. See if they're going to, uh, Aaron or Todd going to get in there and jump in and see what's what. You know what I'm saying? Try to save their man. Uh, but see if they had older gentlemen in there like Greg, Peter, um, Apollo. They'll be like, you know, we're we, we going to talk to him. We're going to talk to the film. And we're we going to get it straight for you, Drew. We're going to get it straight because, yeah, he's foul. He's he living foul. We're going to show him how to handle smooth over things and still keep the love intact. But see, we ain't dealing with them kind of uh, men. And Aaron, he really only speaks when he's spoken to. He's more of an observer. He don't get too much in people's business. And I adore him. I adore, I adore uh, men like him because they're sitting and they looking. And they're trying to deduce everything from what's true and what's fiction. And they know they've seen uh, Ralph in action. And they know he's just full of shit. But um, <laughs> I was like, I found this um, song for Drew Sedora to play to Ralph when she's really ready to deal with her situation. Because sometimes you can't put duct tape on it. You, you, you can't uh, wrap it in a, a sling think it's going to repair itself. You don't have two willing people wanting to work, do the work, and make it work. In a marriage, you can forget it. Just go on and find somebody else to get divorced, keep it moving. Because ain't no sense you, you know, fussing with him every day, every second of the day, or what he don't do, what he should be doing, 
who he messing with, why he messing with, and when he coming home. All those kind of questions, all those kinds of uh, lessons you trying to make him learn. This bullshit, babe. Okay, right now we living in a world where you either gonna be my peace or you gonna be my enemy. Okay, be my peace or be my enemy. Which one you can't choose? And if he choose to be your enemy, let that ego go. Let him go. Okay. Let him go like you touched the hot stove and you felt that steam and that heat and that pain. You quickly got your hand off of it, right? Look at uh, uh, Ralph that way. But I found a little soulful, funky music uh, song that I used to groove to. It's really my mama age group. But the voices are just angelic. They just really smooth and they, they are covered up, people, okay? Not like these artists out here now have, but naked. They just selling sex and all that. But I want y'all to, well, y'all probably young, but, you know, I got some old people. I got some seasoned people with me. Do anybody remember the honeycomb and that song called Put It In The Wounds? Uh, something, I'm looking for a man. Put it in the wound ass. Let me let pray a little diddly for you here and there. Hold on, guys. Lift it. Perfume. Liar. Want it. Want it. Yes, honey, that's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna put it in the want ass. Looking for a, a single man. Where I go? Looking for a man, single and free. Uh, experiencing love, preferred, but a young trainee would get me something. I said, all right, that's what I'm talking about. Put it in the wrong ass, honey. Sometimes you got to let people go, honey. Let people go and have your peace because ain't nothing like having your peace of mind. Okay? And your solitude to get that mental back in order. But let's go on into um, people. Magazine, people.com wrote this article on out. It was Dave Quinn who put it into fruition and put it in his own words to give us a re report on the breakdown of this particular story. It was titled, Kenya Moore calls out Drew Sador, disrespectful husband. You're tearing her down. Okay, I've seen the way he speaks to her. Kenya Moore, it's being referenced, said on Sunday's Real Housewives of Atlanta, calling out Ralph Pittman and his relationship with wife Drew Sador. Let me get some water. My mouth kind of dry. And that was uh, in that little clip with the young man. That was the gay assistant that was telling Drew to tea. What was it? He telling Drew? Yeah, he was. Well, no, I guess he was talking behind Drew back. But anyway, it got out that uh, one of them guys had said that her husband, which is Drew's husband, is gay. Okay, but like I said, gay straight, it's all the same. It's cheating shit. Let's not forget about what it is. Okay, don't call a thing a thing or that or that or that. Let's call it for what it is. It's cheating, whether you're doing it with somebody of the same sex or the or opposite sex. It's still cheating. Okay, but anyway. It says, Drew Sador had a surprising ally on her side in her going back and forth with her husband, Ralph Pittman, from a rival, Kenya Moore. On Sunday's Real Housewives of Atlanta, uh, Moore stood up for D Sidora, calling Pittman out on his disrespectful behavior. Pittman and Sidora has been at odds since she joined the show last season, first arguing over his last-minute unannounced solo trip to Tampa, Florida, and this year butting heads when he admitted to getting close with his female assistant, who later ended a fancy well, who ended a fancy dinner he threw for Sidora when she attempted to address their ongoing issues. Drew doesn't respect me, doesn't appreciate me. Pittman complained on Sunday during a couples therapy session. I give her the stuff that any woman would appreciate. This one here, 
It's like everything is a problem with her because she's insatiable. I tried to give her steak and lobster last night. Really, truly, that night she deserved a Lunchable. See, now I got to break it up right here. You ain't going to tell me what I deserve because I'm sitting up here telling you how I feel. Isn't that what therapy is all about? Isn't that what counseling is all about? Is making sure your partner know exactly how you feel. No ending those. No covering it up with a little soft tap here and there. Now coming with the truth with no chaser. Okay. If the girl were coming to you like that. You just sit there. Understand what she's saying. Hear her in totality. And then make some moves to try to make it better. If that's something you want to do Ralph. Okay. Don't say what you would have fed her. Because ain't no man got to feed no woman. Okay. Hopefully, from her being on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, she done saved her little coins here and there. So she could feed her own damn self. Because the shit that you did, first of all, I'm like, why are you on top of a roof that you go and get your clothes made by? You know, that's tacky as hell. You could have took her to the bit more in Ashford, North Carolina. And had been in that big ass mansion and just serenading her. Just spending quality time with her. And to lull her into a sense where... I understand, I, I feel and hear what you're saying, and I'm going to do better. You don't want to put all the shit on you. You think you are spotless. You think you are uh, a clean in the situation. No, you just as murky as cloudy, sandy water, okay? Cloudy, sandy water, honey. All right, but God, we go back. We go back to the article. It says that uh, it's all these things that we haven't resolved, Sidora so snapped back, describing her marriage as a vicious cycle of high highs and low lows. When asked about their therapist, Dr. Ken to leave, wait a minute, when asked by their therapist, Dr. Ken to live moment more in the moment, how can we be in this bliss that's not real? The compromise, at least temporarily, was for the two to partake in a 30-day ceasefire in which they agreed not to get into any combative conversations, no yelling, no attacking, under any circumstances, Dr. Ken told them. That didn't seem to last long, as days later, while on a cash trip to New York City, the two began to once again bicker as they discussed their issues. Emotionally, I'm dealing with the fact that we're even dealing with the fact that we were even dealing with another woman. Okay. Sidora so told her fellow housewives. Explaining why she was no longer wearing her wedding ring. Well. How you put it Drew, You were saying that. You had got a little fatter. Your hands started to swell. Da 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 da. Bullshit. Okay. And. I guess you thought it would hurt him in some kind of way. While you not having your wedding ring on. Um, that me that seems a little bit more plausible to me. And I want to just touch a little basis on why Todd said he has his ring on all the time. Ralph wears his and this, that, and the third. Well, honey, I have definitely seen, has not even had conversations with other women. That is a magnet. That's an attraction for women when they see somebody that's married when they see a man having a wedding band on that's more attractive i don't know why it is maybe somebody can explain it to me but that's a key drawer for single women or so even other married women trying to come and take your man or have some time with your man without the other party knowing about it you get what i'm saying so that's probably why those little jokers wear their rings okay they faithful to a certain degree because if some bootylicious go past them you know they're gonna drop their mouth gonna drop and they're gonna be like oh i wonder can i got do i have the skills to try to get that you know what i'm saying even if it's I just get their attention and I can tell they want me. You know, they're going to try to start playing these mind games. Trying to, you know, strike up a conversation with these women. Okay. So, they put it out there. The women will approach. That's like clickbait bait for them. Well, not clickbait, but like bait that you throw in for a fish to uh, think that that's something real. That they can eat upon, but it's really something fake. Bad analogy, I know. But y'all get where I'm going with it. So, I was like, uh-uh, that's why you wear your ring. Because if it wasn't no magnet type drawing women to you all, you probably half you wouldn't wear your rings anyway. And to tell the truth, you really don't have to have a ring. It's more so for the woman. I agree. But you might have some men that like to have their band on and they really treasure the band or, or the ring that they got. But that's just a symbol. You know, it's all in the mind. It's very mental and it's contractual when we put it on paper. The rings are just a symbolic type that shows another person that you are spoken for. 
So it's not a, I don't say it's a bad thing that you don't wear it. But if you want to let people know that you are married, it's it's a good deal. Sometimes it it chases men away for women. And sometimes, like I said, it's a magnet. They draw them because they feel like they don't have to have time. Not the whole time. The time that they want to spend just having fun, just having, you know, chaos that is, you know, very, uh, what do you call it, inviting and exciting. <laughs> they would go for it because they know they ain't got to go home to this woman or this man. They can enjoy the time that they have with them and then they got to go back to their real life. Their humdrum, boring life, I guess, to got them cheating in the first damn place. But okay, I just had to touch on that because I was like, don't, don't be giving Todd no uh, praise. Don't be giving ta- uh, Ralph no praise, okay? Anybody I can say that pretty much maybe really care about his marriage and have good communication is Aaron, okay? But going past that, it says, um, I had to fire the assistant, Pittman said. I guess the question is, how do you finally get over it and say, this is something that happened in the past and now we can move beyond, beyond it? And uh, Ken was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, you ain't going to disregard what you said and you did and made her feel a certain way. It's all about how you handle it from the time that it happened to, you know, in the future. Anything y'all have going on, you know not to do these things that irritate her. And then maybe she can feel at ease. But right now, no, you're not making her feel good at all. You want to just go away from the situation and wish it never happened or wish it never came up that you have to keep talking about it because she keep talking about it. So Kenya was really drilling it in his head and just, you know, letting him feel where he couldn't talk anymore. He had to listen. And what she was saying was validating Drew's disapproval of what he does to her or make her feel like she just doing it to herself. It's really not happening the way she's explaining it. Okay. Then we got, um, go back to the article says, but Candy Burris wasn't going to let Pittman off the hook that easy. Come on, you know it looked real crazy, she told him of her, his relationship with his former assistant, who had allegedly propositioned to give Pittman a massage over text messages Sidora so later found. And it can, if you don't understand, he said, and it can if you don't understand the context behind it. See, that's uh, rap playing the mind games again. He's trying to put it like, in theory, trying to analyze it, but it's really not. He's trying to play psychology, is what he is, and that's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Because I would have told him, stop the bullshit, stop over talking me, stop doing all of that. Let's just deal with it. Is you got a, a woman that's you, you got a sister, you chose a sister that was a woman, okay. I'm pretty sure she's not no ugly woman. I'm pretty sure she has got a body out here or you wouldn't have wanted her. Anybody that's plain Jane, look at simple, you consider not attractive, overweight, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But you didn't do that. You you could have got an assistant that was a guy. You know, he was like, I don't want no guy around me. Well, if it's your boy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ralph, you just have no legs to stand on. They've been chopped off, okay? You have nothing as an excuse to keep validating what you feel is right. Okay, that was just my side part. We're going to get back. Um, he said, I did on my part, but it wasn't like Ralph said, hey, let me go and grab this assistant with the big butt. Drew and I were having some extremely bad growing pains as well, and we were trying to do business together. We were in a dark place. So basically, when he gave that description of that particular assistant, she had a big butt. He enjoyed looking at that big butt. You see what I'm saying? You can't say something like that and don't think somebody didn't partake or wanted to partake of the big butt scene. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, that logic didn't work with Burris. That's even worse for you to have a woman who was around who was working closely with you you she shot back i don't understand how you don't see how she would feel away still Pittman didn't back down why are we even recounting this anymore he asked the door something occurs to you a different way than it occurs to me and it's fine it wasn't fine to more who took that opportunity to step in and stand up for Sidora. see let me say this to you right now if my husband said that to me, I would flip this table over because that is so disrespectful, she told Pittman. Now, we're going to side, sidebar on that one. We know. Of course, you need to take a, a, a hint of this because um, a fall time over there doing the same gaslighting uh, to you that Drew, what Ralph was doing to Jusor, I mean, um, Sidora. Okay, or Drew. But he says, um, 
but you know, Kenya, we know you, you had this opportunity because you made compare and contra contrast and comparison about how Mark treated you the same way. And we didn't see you throwing shit over or getting upset, throwing plates, knives, silverware, all of that. We didn't see any of that going. You just was in the moment. He was dogging the hell out of you and you were taking it, okay? So for for you to make up this little lie right here, but you're going to throw some table. Now nah, you probably want to cuss him out with cuss words and all that kind of stuff. That would be more believable than you finna sit and throw over a table. But anyway, we're going to go past that. I just couldn't let that go. I just couldn't let it go, y'all. Yeah, I know. Okay. Uh, she said, I would basically flip this table over because that is so disrespectful, she told Pittman. You're basically saying that she's lying and how it happened was not how it happened. That would piss me the F off. If somebody said that to me, to my face, especially if I'm hurting, do you not understand that? You're tearing her down. Okay. She also noted how Pittman's gaslighting was reminiscent of things that her estranged husband, Mark Daly, used to do. Ralph, you remind me so much of Mark. It's crazy, Moore said. She doesn't want to feel invalidated. She doesn't want to say something and you get defensive and you say you're crazy for thinking that. It's an asshole. He's an asshole. I have seen the way he speaks to her. And it reminds me of times when Mark would speak to me like that. More said at the table. Adding in confessionals. I'm trying to see Drew for who she is. And what I can see is somebody who is really hurt. Sidora for her part was appreciative, was appreciative of more support. Can you actually communicate it exactly how I feel? She said in confessionals. I hope Ralph really hears he could be doing some of the same things she experienced with Mark. And you see where they ended up. Okay. In the end, Sidora and Pittman didn't appear to find any resolution. And while the women seemed to agree Pittman was wrong for dismissing Sidora's feelings, they also had some strong feelings about Sidora. Drew Bow, it's you too. Well, Marlo brought that up. She's like, um, we're going to leave no stone on turn. On, on turn. If we're going to get on uh, Ralph's behind, we're going to get in your ass too. So uh, that was Marlo bringing that up. And Kenya uh, chimed in as, you know, being like, yeah, you're exactly right. She can feed the fire as well. But um, it says, Drew Bow, if you, if you too, though, He's only doing what you allow, says Marlo Hampton with new, with new housewife saying Richardson adding in. That's a good point because you do teach people how to love you. A few of us have been in fights with Drew verbally. She cannot let stuff go, more added. Drew cannot let stuff go and it's ironic because some of the things she accuses you of, she does it also. Like acknowledging when she's wrong. Perhaps that's something Sadora will work on as she admitted in the episode. She's committed to fixing things with Pittman. I want my marriage to work. I want to be married forever. She said, all the prayer words are out for the Pittmans. I'm like, girl, you can't, be you can't be dependent on no prayer warriors, okay? You can't think that everybody's praying for you is praying good things for you, all right? You need to get on your knees or talk to the Lord however you need to talk to. You and Ralph need to fix that issue, okay? Along with the help of the Lord, okay? But him being the first and the uh, ultimate reign of your relationship but you can't stay in something detrimental that's going to make you mental and you're going to be making your kids mental because you're under all this stress and stress can cause a heart attack and, and a lot of other medical issues okay so you know that's why i found that song for you i was like let's put it in the wrong ass yes let's listen to that song again y'all I don't know if y'all knew that song, but sometimes you got to go back for the old and goodest. They be really talking some stuff.
Yes, a young man, another man who's single and free. Now, that was by the Honeycomb. Uh, it should have been Combs, but it's Honeycomb. And the song was called Won't Ass, honey. If you need a second opinion, listen to that song, Drew. It would get you through, girl. It would get you through. Because you need to just let Rob back and go into the sea. Let him feel what it feels like to be needed and wanted, okay? If you start playing the tricks that he's playing, which nobody really should be playing tricks or psychological tricks in any relationship that they're um, dealing with, everybody should be upfront and aware of how um, things you do affect the other person, okay? Because if you can't act right, be right, then damn, yeah, just leave the shit alone, okay? That's, how, that's my motto. That's been my motto for a long time. I cherish peace over antibody. Peace over antibody. But if y'all like this uh, video, please get down in them comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Like and share my videos, okay? And I will see y'all next time. Peace out.